Hello, mamas. Hope you guys are doing great this week. We are back for week two of our audio teaching from the online Bible study, Mom Set Free. My name is Melissa Taylor, and I'm joined again with the author and fellow mama who's in the trenches with us, Jeannie Cunyon. Hi, Jeannie. Welcome back. Hey, guys. I'm so happy to be with you today. Awesome. Well, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, Jeannie Cunyon is the author of our Mom Set Free online Bible study. She's a woman who loves Jesus with all her heart. She loves her kids and her family with all her heart, and she's just trying to get this right. And I think that's why we all signed up for this study, is we want to get it right, but we feel a lot of pressure in trying to do that. And so we are here together to learn more and more about receiving that grace that can help us in our parenting. And each week, Jeannie is here to offer us some encouragement And so without further ado, we want to get started with this week's um, message from Jeannie, and it is about the freedom from being in control. And Jeannie, we can't wait to hear what you have to share with us this week. No, well, this is definitely a convicting message to share (laughs) because I like being in Um, control. Same here. I very much know I am not. So we're going to talk about the freedom from trying to be in control, from trying to play God's role in our kids' lives. Um, I'll tell you a story. When I when I've prayed for my kids, I have always used the words "my boys" or "my sons." Uh, Mike and I have five boys who range from five to twenty-four, and so I joke that my hobbies are praying and grocery shopping. <laughs> um, and so, but there's you know there's of course nothing wrong with praying the words "my boys" or "my sons." God entrusted these boys to my husband and me to raise to His glory. But on one particular and very unforgettable night while crying out to God about a painful hardship that one of my boys was facing, and I was feeling completely incompetent to help him navigate it, I felt the Holy Spirit remind me that my boys are first and foremost sons of God, that as much as I love them and long for them to know God's love, that they were created by God, they belong to God. And God's love and desire for them is infinitely more profound and pure than mine. And in light of this truth, I began to pray your sons rather than my sons, to be reminded that God is their all-knowing, all-powerful Father who will not let them down. And this is the truth that we have to remember when our children are bullied or rejected by their peers, when they're battling sin and temptation when their feelings get hurt or their hearts get broken, when they struggle with substance abuse or eating disorders, when they make wrong choices, when they simply don't feel lovable or valuable, when our hearts break for our kids and we long to right every wrong in their lives, we have to remember they have a sovereign and good heavenly father. And I can't help but wonder what are some of the battles that you are facing today alongside of your children right now that you desperately wish you could fix or control. I can tell you so many things are coming to mind for me right now. But remembering our good father's sovereignty relieves so much of the pressure we experience in motherhood. It's not all up to you and it's not all up to me and praise him for that. I desperately needed to be reminded of this recently on a terrible day at the end of a terrible week. It was a week that entailed bad grades in school for one of my boys and bad words in the schoolyard for another and bad dreams at night for another one of my boys. And these are the things that break my mama heart and they threaten to break my spirit because we give our kids everything we've got. We guide them in truth. We encourage them to use their God-given gifts to the fullest. We try to model godly living. We pray and we pray and we pray, but ultimately we have to face that we are powerless to control the outcome of our effort. So we get to put our trust in our all powerful God. And there's a guy in the Bible named Jehoshaphat. Good job. I hope I said that right. (laughs) (laughs) Melissa, is it Jehoshaphat? I think. I'm going gonna, knows- I'm gonna to agree with you. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you. Yes. Yeah. I okay. Think we're, we're, we're somewhere, <laughs> we're somewhere in there, but he knows something about feeling powerless. And I want us to learn from him today. The story is in second Chronicles chapter 20 verses one through 12. And I won't read the whole story because there's several more words I will butcher if I try to read it. 
But the gist is that Jehoshaphat received word that a huge force was on its way from beyond uh, the Dead Sea to battle him. Uh, It was a vast army marching against him from the Dead Sea, and they were already on their way. It was a huge battle. And scripture says he was terrified by this news, and he begged the Lord for guidance. He didn't have a clue what to do in this situation, and he felt the pressure, like the outcome all depended on what he decided and what he did. And if we're honest, there's a lot of days in motherhood that can feel like this. Instead of all these tribes coming at us, our battles look like some of the hardships we just mentioned, and we're afraid. Maybe we're even terrified. But then in verse three, we see how Jehoshaphat prepared for the battle. Scripture said he set his face to seek the Lord. He set his face to seek the Lord. See, that verse stops me and it invites me to ask, is this how I fight my battles in motherhood? Do I set my face to seek the Lord when I'm walking through battles or I see battles that my kids are walking through? The following verses in this story, verses 4 through 11, are really his heart cry to the Lord. He he recounts God's faithfulness in the past to give him hope for the future. He remembers God's faithfulness in the past to give him hope for the future. But it's how he ends his prayer in verse 12 that I don't want us to miss. He said, we are powerless against this battle. We do not know what to do but our eyes are on you. So just imagine how much deeper we breathe and honestly, how much better we'd sleep if we had on repeat the prayer of Jehoshaphat. How often do we not know what to do? How often do we feel powerless over the things our kids are facing and navigating? And we think it's all up to us to figure it out, to solve it, to be the rescuer when really we're just trying to fill shoes in their lives that only fit their heavenly father. The invitation to us is to rely on God, to fix our eyes on him, to set our face to him and trust that he is good, that he is sovereign, that they belong to him and so do the battles before us. Mm -hmm. So we pray, Lord, we do not know what to do but our eyes are on you and we will trust you with the children that you have entrusted to us. Amen. Amen. Jeannie. um, And let me just ask you mamas, is there a single one of you who is not just, you can relate to everything that you just heard? How often are we Are we afraid or are we worried about our children? And I love that in scripture, it says that Jehoshaphat was terrified and he begged the Lord for guidance. And I think what, um, what a formula for us when you're Mm -hmm. feeling that unsettledness or that fear, whether no matter what it is, you guys, it can be something big and it can be the little things too that keep us up at night, but go to the Lord, like just Try to make that your trigger. Is there fear? Is that worry? I'm going to the Lord. And Jeannie, like you said, um, he remembered God's faithfulness in the past, and that gave him hope in the future. And so you guys, think about the victories that, that you have as well, and thank God for them, and remember them. Remember those problems that you've already gone through, and how you got through them. You're here today, so you you got through them. And so um, keep going to the Lord because um, this was a great follow-up from last week. We're still just really learning. It all comes down to trusting God. Mm -hmm. They really are His first. Yeah, and it's such a, that middle of the night prayer for me now has become, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix this situation in this son's life. I don't, I don't know how to help my son believe this is true about his identity in Christ. I don't, I don't know how to make this decision. It feels so big and it feels like it's all weighing on me and all these things are bouncing around in my brain. And I just go, Lord, I do not know what to do, Mm -hmm. but my eyes are on you because they are my sons. But more than that, they are your sons. They belong to you. 
That is exactly right. Jeannie, thank you again so much. We do want to be in control, but we need the freedom from being in control because guess what, everybody? Ultimately, we're not in control. And so we have mm-hmm. to, to be able to settle that in our hearts. Thank you again for another great teaching. And um, everybody, we're just in week two. We're going to keep going next week. Jeannie will be back with another message to um, to encourage you in your walk and being a mom. And you guys, we're going to be getting honest about our weaknesses next week. Mm-hmm. And so we're really looking forward to that, Jeannie. Thank you so much for everything today. My pleasure. All right, everybody. Remember what we say around here at Proverbs 31, because um, we can't do without it. But God's word is the truth. And we want to get into God's Word, which is what this Bible study is all about. And when we know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything.